Hello and welcome to today's video. So at this time we've got the latest two releases from the Corgi Model Club. That's Corgi 472, the Land Rover public address vehicle, and Corgi 337, the customised Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay then, so we'll start off with number 472 here. The, uh, the Land Rover. So uh, Land Rover public address vehicle, Huey 472. So let's get this one out of the box first of all. Vote Corgi. So it says speaker, that's that guy with microphone and supporting loudspeakers, spring suspension, seats and steering wheel. Okay. This one's actually already slightly out of the, uh, the box, but if I slide my screwdriver in there, I should be able to open that one without damaging it. With a bit of luck. It's been a little stubborn. There we are. Okay, so it's got some foam in there to keep it in situ. There we are. There's another little bit of foam there as well. So I pop that back in so it's all complete. Because I like to have these on display in my uh, my display case. And let's have a look at the actual vehicle. Now, doesn't this one look familiar to one of the Chipperfields ones where they've got um, a clown where that bloke is and then a monkey in the back? This one says, vote for Corgi. Land Rover 109 WB. Yep, yeah, definitely got the uh, the spring suspension there. <laughs> yeah, and the actual person can be slightly angled, so I might have him like that when I have my one uh, in the cabinet. Yeah, it's not bad. This is the first uh, Land Rover they've done. I'm not a massive Land Rover fan, in all honesty, but I don't mind it. So let's just uh, see what it says about this particular one, because like all the Corgi model clubs, it comes with a certificate. Um, mine is number 3873. Um, I don't know of how many, just that's the number that it's got. And uh, let's have a little read of it. So it says Land Rover public address vehicle Corgi 472. Corgi 472 was launched into the range in 1964. Topically in the same month, Harold Wilson narrowly won a general election, becoming Britain's first Labour Prime Minister for 13 years. The model remained in the Corgi range for just two short years, ensuring its rarity today. The casting was based on that of Corgi 438, but given a new plastic moulding at the rear, complete with loudspeakers and a pair of electro or oh, electioneering figures. Rather sensibly, Corgi opted for a non-political vote for Corgi message on the sides. Very wise. Here we are, look. Memorably, the tooling was used again in 1965 with the Chipperfield Circus livery. It didn't go unnoticed that the two figures in this new version Corgi 487, or of a clown and a monkey. There we are. So I do collect the uh, the Corgi Chipperfield Circus models, and I have seen pictures of that particular one, a Corgi 487, although it's not one that I've actually got. But I thought I'd seen this one before with the uh, yeah the clown there and the monkey monkey in the back. So yeah, not a bad little um, not a bad little model that one. Um, yeah, I'm quite quite pleased with that. I mean, it's not as I said, I'm not a massive. Um, Land Rover fan really but I don't mind it at all so we'll uh, you know it's it's all part of the Corgi story isn't it now we do have one more I always do these in pairs um, and this was number 337 here the customized Chevrolet Corvette Stingray uh, this looks pretty good I do love um, these sort of uh, spaced out 60s ones as it were um, very much reflective of the era that they were produced and uh, this is probably the sort of car I would have gone for if I was around back then I would have bought these sorts of cars so let's see if we can tease it out of the box there we are join the Corgi model club well we have incidentally I was having a good look at the uh, Corgi model club Facebook page today just to see if there's any new updates and uh, it really is quite a lively page that one so I do recommend um, you check that one out if you haven't already um, they do let you know about all the new releases on there although I have got like a full list of those uh, which I usually show at the end of each video so I won't forget to put that list on 
this time around as well so you can see uh, which ones you've got and which ones are on the horizon so look at that well, first of all isn't it really is quite outstanding the way that it's so, so bright and vivid that is so 60s with, <laughs> with the uh the uh, the lights there i mean that really is so i mean go 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 that screams 60s that one doesn't it chevrolet corvette stingray wow 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 now what does it say about the features customized finish plated fittings i guess that's the uh the engines on the side there including air intake and exhaust system spring suspension seats and steering wheels so yeah once again it's got that that nice suspension on it which is cool so let's have a little read of the uh certificates mine's 3931 for this one customized chevrolet corvette stingray corgi 337 based on an earlier corgi stingray 310 which was issued in 1963. This exuberant retooling from 1967 grabbed the attention of British schoolboys by the scruff of their necks and transported them to the drag racing strips of North America. Dripping in chrome exhausts and engine trumpets with loud in-your-face graphics and a bright yellow lavery, Corgi 337 was a harbinger of things to come. Well, over half a million were sold in the two short years it was in the Corgi toy range a sure mark of its appeal. Love it or loathe it, by the end of the decade, other Corgi models would follow 337's less than subtle charge towards the 1970s and the eventual Whiz Wheels era. Well, there you go. There we go. So I thought it looked a bit sort of 60s and uh, we, were, we were very much right, weren't we? Wow, wow, wow. It does really look quite quite cool that one and as i said that would have been the sort of one i would have been attracted to look at that lazy bones <laughs> um but selling two million i can't imagine it's particularly rare even it's in its um sort of original format um as uh, you know if you wanted to go out and buy the original but i gotta admit it's lovely to have these uh, when they're really really mint excellent stuff now before i forget i did want to say that i had noticed over the last couple of weeks that People opposed to the Corgi Model Club. What about the all-important Batmobile? Because loads of people are after the Batmobile and negotiations are ongoing, but it's going to be quite, quite difficult. But they haven't given up hope yet. Also for the original Man From Uncle car. Um, and they said if they do end up doing that one, because it came in white and blue, they're going to do the uh, the blue version of that one. So, um, yeah, it's cool. I'd, I'd love them to do some more uh, TV and film models. That's for certain. Now, as is tradition... I shall uh, show you these in situ in my nicer uh, glass display case and also we'll pop up the uh, the existing range and what's to come, or at least what's officially been announced between now and uh, the end of the year. In fact, into early 2025 now, I think they've gone quite a way ahead with their plans. So um, I'll pop that up on the screen right now. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed looking through today's latest offerings from the Corgi Model Club. And thank you very much for enjoying this series. It's proven very, very popular. If you do enjoy it, do please give it the thumbs up. Do please hit the subscribe button if you're not already for regular vintage diecast content. And I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye. <laughs>